it supports similar previous or similar intestinal studies based on their major and minor groups. So major groups out there with growth bacteroides and formicides, which was similar to previous studies. And then my minor groups, probiobacteria and vermicrobia, were found in previous studies as well. Now, like I said, those previous studies were based on culture and techniques, so they do typically favor aerobic organisms because they're easier to grow. But 16S RNA analysis catches everything, or should catch almost everything. Anything that's living, anything that's dead, and anything that's just simply there. So it is possible that the 16S RNA analysis will shift those overall percentages of the minor bacterial group. So what was previously published as a common minor bacterial group may not be as common as thought. As far as thought. And 98% of my sequences were classified phylogenetically into seven different families. And eight novel phylotypes were identified. These were not previously published in the bank and they have been accepted for publication. Um, highly degrading organisms were found or were indicated by this genetic comparison. And this included sequences that were relatively homologous to bacterial Aspergillus and Aromonas hydrophilia. And some future possibilities where we could go with this would be to compare the testicle microflora of the adult coast gray tree frogs to tadpoles because their intestines do shift so drastically during metamorphosis and during that transition. And their diets change during that time. They go from eating more plant like material to more uh, to insects. And it is possible that the bacteria that we find could be the same bacteria there, but they actually might change function. So instead of degrading the cellulose, they might change to degrading pipe. Or it could be a whole new slew of bacteria. It would be interesting to look at. We could also compare these with more adult Hylophosphorus frogs. For example, from different collection sites. Like I said, my five frogs were collected from a single site at a single time. So we could collect them from different collection sites at different times. We could collect them outside of breeding season. I didn't mention this, but my five frogs were chosen or collected during breeding season, and it has been suggested in previous literature that they don't feed while they're breeding season. So it would be interesting to see if it's very different. It would also be kind of interesting to see males versus females. Like I said, I, asked, I didn't purposely pick all five males, but they ended up being all male. But that actually opens up the door to look at male versus female to see if there's any differences. So with that, I would like to acknowledge the JSU Department of Biology, specifically my committee members, Dr. Blair, Dr. Brown, Dr. Klein, as well as all the other professors, and Stan Barron for collecting the frogs, because frankly, I'm not a very good frog collector, <laughs> and uh, Richard for all of his laboratory assistance. He was great. With that, I can entertain some questions. say that the bacteria that would be associated with the food that the animals eat pass through the digestive tract rather than setting up residence. Right, they can. They can. Now if there is an opening, say say some of the normal flora within your intestinal tract for some reason go away <laughs> for whatever reason. They can actually set down residence and cause infection if they're an opportunistic pathogen that's what they're looking for. But most of the time they just pass through. So, so how is the bacterial population established? How does an organism acquire the bacteria initially? Initially, it would have to be from what they take in, in my opinion. It would have to be from what they take in, because there's no other way to get it into their system than to. So some of those initially, some it's a faithful environment. And I'm sure throughout their life, some of them are dying and being repopulated. So 
I would assume, based on that, that would probably just be some transitory, or it could be something that's brought in and then you will set a precedence uh -huh. the test case. I don't think you can come through and say that this is uh, normal or this is transitory. I'm just curious if you're going to be flush beforehand, uh, a light flush might get the stuff that's in the You could, but the normal flora is going to be throughout the entire intestinal tract, so you're going to be flushing out. Sam Clay. Yeah. Well, I was with him. I got one frog. He got the rest. Um, we did it at Henry Farm Park. It was actually in a little ditch behind the baseball field. It was filled with toads and, and gray tree frogs. It's very difficult not to step on the frogs. The toads were easy to see, but everything was falling apart. Thank you.